so every year I make a video about my workflow. Now it's been about eight or nine months since I did the last one and there have been some changes. So I thought I'd make another video. Uh, now this is not going to be my entire workflow because there's some stuff that I just, it would be hard to show on camera. But the point, I want to talk about the apps that I use and how I use them, the window manager that I use and things like that. I'll also talk a little bit about my hardware and stuff. So this will answer some of the questions that I get quite often in the comment section below. Like, you know, what do you use to record your videos? What do you use to edit your videos? What's your computer like? And all this stuff, right? Uh, now I'm not doing a room tour. Uh, I know other YouTubers do a like an office tour, but mine is a bloody mess, and I'm not showing it on camera as much as possible. What you see here is about the cleanest part of the office, folks. That's as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> now it's it's not it's not as if it's a, it's a pigsty or anything, but the you know it just is not as clean as it would need to be if it was gonna show it on camera. So we'll just focus on the digital aspect of my workflow today. Uh, maybe if I can get around and actually find some shelves to put some stuff on i, I will do a, an office tour but anyways uh I'm, today i'm going to talk about my workflow before i jump in if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video i'd really appreciate it it really does help the channel so let's go ahead and i'll show you uh my setup right now so this right here is qtile now uh i tend to switch between work or work window managers quite often I even talk about that many times in videos. I talked about it a week ago when I was was going to switch to DWM. And I did switch to DWM for a little while. And uh, then I got Qtile working again and ended up coming back to Qtile. Now, see, that's the thing about this whole situation is that Qtile has my heart. It's in its grasp. It's not letting go. Qtile is fantastic, and I'm never going to leave it behind unless I absolutely have to. Uh, well, I mean, I'm a never... You guys know me. I like to switch. <laughs> I changed my mind very, very fast. So tomorrow I may end up hating Qtile. I don't think that that's going to happen, though, because I've been using Qtile now for uh, months, and it is fantastic. So the, uh, first of all, I like workspaces. I like the way that that Qtile does workspaces. So if I'm on Workspace 3, which is where I'm at right now, I can move Workspace 3 to the other monitor. So if I wanted to go to Workspace 6, which was actually on the other monitor right now, monitor 3, or workspace three is on the other monitor even though it was on this monitor and i can just go back if i want you know it's just that workflow of workspaces works really really well for me and it's better than i3s it's better than dwms it's better than basically any other window manager uh, i know qtile does or uh, xmonad does it basically the same but it, that has the downside of actually being haskell which i i, I hate so <laughs> qtile is fantastic i really like the bar and i have it set up in terms of my ricing, or I should say theming, I'm not supposed to use the word ricing anymore. So I have it so that I can go to my wallpaper folder and go to, like, say, my dedicated color theme. I'll do uh, Monokai. Let's just do this one. I can hit a key binding here and actually change the entire setup for me. So if you notice, now the bar is a different color. I can go to a different one. Let's just go to Solarize. Why not? Eh, I'm not actually using Gen 2, but what the hell? We'll just do that. And then... As you can see, now I have a Solarized setup. And while I hate Solarized, which is the reason why I only have one wallpaper for it, I'm really, really liking the Pywall thing. So the, the way I did this was with Pywall, and Pywall has integrations for basically everything, including Qtile, and it just looks and works fantastically well, as you can see. Now, I have a button on my stream deck that allows me to do a random setup. I will not be pressing that because it's possible that I'll get a not a not safe for work wallpaper. So I won't I won't do that. But I do have that set up. So I do have a stream deck that sits in front of my mouse and I've just I just got it so I only have a little bit of uh things configured for it. I have the pie wall thing. I have one to save the current wallpaper as a favorite. And then I have three buttons set up so far for OBS. I have one for the main cam, which is this one here, and then the no cam, which is that one there, and then the Patreon at the end. So I do have that set up. Now, it's, it doesn't work 100% well, because if, if I'm in a window manager that has the key bindings that are set to those buttons, it doesn't actually work for, for OBS, so I have to fix that. But that's that's the way that I switch scenes. I know a lot of people just use the keyboard, but I now have the Stream Deck and it actually works really, really well with Deckmaster. Deckmaster is the thing that I use to configure the Stream Deck on Linux. I don't think that I'll actually make a, a video on that, but I am in the process of writing a blog post, so that'll be out in a couple weeks for everybody else. It'll be up for Patreons, uh, patrons here in a few hours as of me re recording this. So in terms of my theme, that's how I've been theming inside of Qtile. 
I do use Ranger as a terminal file manager. I still use Crusader as my default GUI file manager. Now, I know I talked about Thunar a couple weeks ago. I still do like Thunar, but I ended up going back to Crusader just because it's just so good, guys. It doesn't have any flaws. <laughs> like, like the only flaw that it has is that it's QT, and that's not a big enough flaw to keep me away from it, right? So it has all the features that I want, plus many, many more. And while, yeah, it can be considered bloated, I still prefer this, and it's just, I keep coming back to it. And, and there's just nothing out there that compares to it, unfortunately. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm back with Crusader. Now, I do use... Caden Live to edit my videos. So people ask what I use to edit my videos. I use Caden Live. It's the best video editor on Linux. And if you notice a little bit of a tone there when I say that, it's because, well, it's not much of a competition, to be honest with you. The rest of the video editors on Linux are kind of garbage. Uh, now, I have for a long time wanted to use DaVinci Resolve to give that a try, but I cannot get it to run on any distribution. I'm just not smart enough to do it, apparently. I don't, I don't know. It's apparently too hard for me but that's what i use to edit videos i do still use audacity to record videos sometimes i've been trying to just in, to record it in obs for the last couple of videos because I'm, I'm it does a better job of filtering out the air conditioner and the fan which i have to have because it's like ninety thousand degrees outside so usually i use audacity i've been trying to just use obs for the last couple of videos uh, and you notice here when i launch this this is actually uh, Rofi, and I, I've been working on Rofi a little bit, so uh, I have it display more applications. The text is a little bit bigger, and I use the crap out of Rofi, so I have things like Clip Menu, which still won't launch in OpenSUSE for some reason, and I'm not sure why, so I have to launch that manually. So, yeah, I have Clip Menu there. Um, still not working with my key binding. I'm not sure why. I also ha use scratch pads a lot. So, uh, my, I have a scratch pad for my music player, which I've been listening to this Buck Cherry album for like a month. I do that a lot. So, if you guys watch my videos and you see the thing, the, the music that I'm playing, you're probably like, man, this guy never listens to music. But what I do is I pick an album that I really, really like and then I listen to it over and over again. I don't know why I do that. It's just kind of the way that I do it. I also have one for just a regular terminal, and I actually have two for that. So I have that that one, and then I have that one, and then I have I have a Newsboat. So that's Newsboat, and then I have Pulse Mixer, and I have another Ranger here. I I use the crap out of scratch pads. They're fantastic. I cannot do without them. Uh, Super Shift B brings up my movie. So this is my movie Rofi script and I can play a movie from here So if I wanted to you know play, you know 300 I could just do that and it would play 300 Obviously, I don't want to play that uh, here and get the copyright strike But still that's another thing that I do now in terms of browser. I use Vivaldi now I know Vivaldi's proprietary nonsense. I guess I'm a bad I'm a bad bad person a bad advocate for open source because I use proprietary Vivaldi um, but it is honestly one of the few proprietary applications that I use. If that's better, most of everything else is open source. I'm justifying this. So the, th the reason why I use Vivaldi and I've made a video on this is because of workspaces. Uh, if you look here, I have quite a few tabs open. <laughs> uh, it doesn't actually show the number or that I have in main. That's because it's in a, another window. But I have you know the, the 35 tabs open for my stories and the stuff that I'm reading. I have a research tab for work. I have an ideas tab, which is where I have all my ideas for future videos. I have some things that I'm working on for to do. And then I have one that I use for the video space. This is for uh, stuff that I'm using in future uh, videos or past videos. Like this one was for the, the video I did in Fedora. Same with that one. And uh, I think that one was as well. So I can actually close these. But that's that's the reason why I use Vivaldi is because Fedora or because, excuse me, workspaces exist and it's fantastic. So if I actually show you my uh, ideas pane here, the best part. So like this is my ideas workspace. And within my ideas workspace, I can actually have groups with inside of that workspace. So I have a group for apps. I have a group for distros. I have a group for window managers. And then uh, if there's any extraneous ones, I can have those up here as well. So I have I, basically you can have groups inside of groups. And I adore organization like that it's just fantastic it's like having nested folders inside of a, a file system you couldn't live without it you know so <laughs> the fact that this has that is good now i still like firefox and if firefox had the workspace functionality of like that was like this i'd use it in a heartbeat because i'd much prefer to have an open source browser uh, but it doesn't have this exact functionality and i like it 
too much to leave. So Vivaldi is the place where I am right now in terms of browsers. I have been doing a lot of gaming lately, so I have Steam installed. So the games that I have installed are Airport CEO, which I haven't played yet, American Truck Simulator, which I've only played a little bit, City Skylines, which is my jam. I played that probably the most. Let's see, I've, I've played that 170 hours, which is, you know, for people who do a lot of gaming, that probably doesn't seem like much. For But for me, who's not a gamer at all, that's a lot. Uh, I have Cyberpunk 7070, which I haven't actually played yet. I have Dead Cells. I love this game, even though I've only played about 90 minutes or so. I'm horrible at it. <laughs> I'm so bad. I am getting better, slowly. But I'm, I'm just not, I, I, when you die, you have to go all the way back to the beginning, and uh, I'm getting quite sick of that me mechanism. I have a, a Skyrim here, I've played that for about an hour or so, uh, here on spot, on Steam anyways, I played it on Xbox back when it first came out. Uh, that's a good game, I've played God, God of War, that plays really well on Linux. Uh, Halo Master Chief Collection, I haven't played that yet, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, I have MB2K, I haven't played very much of that. I don't care for it all that much. And I just got into Red Dead Re Redemption the other day, so I've only played about an hour of that. That's also really cool. And then I have a couple others. others. So I have been have been gaming quite a bit more than I, I usually do, thanks to the Steam Summer Sale, which I've bought. Like, half of these games that I have installed right now came from this year's Summer Sale. Uh, damn you, Steam. <laughs> I really don't need to buy any more games. Uh, but anyways, the, I've, I've been doing that. Now, the vast majority of my work that I do is inside of NeoVim. So most of my editing for my main job is done inside of, of Vim. Sometimes I'll open up, if it's a truly long, uh, like series of articles, which I, so if you don't know, I work as a editor for a historical magazine as my day job. That's what I do for an actual living because you know, obviously YouTube is not going to cut it. I'm not Mr. Beast. So that's what I do for an actual living. A lot of times when I get articles to edit they'll come in a pack of 10 all in one document and i hate that they do this because it's usually around 20 to 50 to 100,000 words depending on what article the pack that they're sending me right sometimes it's 10 20 articles that they want me to edit all at once now i could theoretically break those things up but that's usually more trouble than it's worth and unfortunately with the way i have my vim set up it does not handle uh, long documents all that well there's some plugin that's bothering that, that doesn't handle that all that well. I'm not getting rid of any of my plugins, so sometimes I have to open up Kate. I've been using Kate as my visual editor for a little while. It doesn't look all that great right now because I'm still kind of fighting or fighting against actually theming any of my Qt applications beyond using a little bit of Cavantum, so I need to fix that if I'm going to continue to use it. I have used Geary and a couple others in the past. Whenever I need to open up a document that's that long, they tend to work better in those applications. So, yeah, those are the things. This right here is usually where I spend most of my time. So, so I'm usually just in Vim, doing editing, doing some writing every once in a while when when the need hits. So that's usually where I spend the vast majority of my day is inside of, of NeoVim. Now, I've chosen NeoVim simply because it's seems to be more updated than than vim is and it has a few of the features a few extra features that i like but honestly i could do just as well with them because i don't use lua inside of the configuration and the big the big thing that nvim can do that vim can't do at least not yet or at least not as well i should say is the lua integration so if you if you are into lua nvim is probably better uh, but I don't do any of that stuff. My configuration file is just kind of plain old vanilla Vim script still. Uh, I, I haven't gotten around to move over to Lua, and I don't know that I ever will because I don't really care for Lua all that much, to be honest with you. Uh, so my configuration of, of NeoVim, and, that, and that's pretty static. I don't really do a ton of stuff when it comes to configuring NeoVim anymore. It's basically the way that I want it so I can open up a, a, a document and just kind of go along with my day. I don't have to worry about the theme or the key bindings or anything like that. I just have it the way that I like it and I, I don't need to change it. So that's that's where I spend the vast majority of my day. That and the browser. Those are the two things. So that's my basic workflow. I spend most of my time in Vim. I use KDN Live. I use Audacity. I use OBS to record my videos. I didn't talk about that, although I did show it on screen. But other than that, it's nothing all that special, right? I, I'm pretty boring when it comes to my workflow. So uh, special apps that I use, you've seen all of them and they're not all that special. So anyways, if you have thoughts on this, if you want to talk about your workflow, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, leave a like on this video. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. 
Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so very much for your support, guys. It just seriously. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.